honored to introduce to you to our first flash panel of the day towards an empowered future. So we have Dr. Reem and we have the lovely Ms. Rasha Abu Asalud, Executive Vice President and CISO of the National Bank here in Saudi. Please join me all. So we can see each other, yes. Yes. Welcome all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We welcome Ms. Rasha Abu Saud, the Vice President, Executive Vice President, and the CISO of Saudi National Bank, to our flash panel of Toward an Empowered Future. Welcome, Ms. Rasha. Allah Thank you. Today, the need of effective, effective cybersecurity is growing in parallel with an increasing digitalization of work processes. While embracing the new technologies, it now defines the company competitiveness on the market, on the market today. It's sufficient operation and uh, future development accordingly. The investment in digital transformation had been accelerated since the pandemic and still on the rise ever since. With such facts, while witnessing the substantial rise in security incidents, cybersecurity became a pillar in such transformation, and managing cyber risk in an efficient and proactive way has become under the radar of the board members in many companies. Dr. Mr. Rusher, noting your vast knowledge in cybersecurity and being the role model when it comes to cybersecurity women leadership, and of course in the financial sector. How is the Saudi National Bank is handling the distinctive milestones that has been approached within, when it comes to the journey of cybersecurity and with the new norm of this digital era? How is it leading the financial entity like CMSNB in addressing cybersecurity with the accelerated transformation? Thank you. Uh Dr. Reem for the question and invitation and allow me and if the audience will allow me first to congratulate you for the success of this event uh, seeing the women in cyber security Middle East Association here in Saudi Arabia presenting in the largest event in the region cyber security event in the, re in the region is a great success mm -hmm. so well done to you and the rest of the team Thank who made that happen and a success. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be here uh, with you today. Uh, going back to the, uh, to the question, um, actually in the Saudi National Bank, the investments started in establishing or uplifting the technical infrastructure when it comes to cybersecurity a few years back uh, or a long time ago. So uh, we were ready as an organization to support the fast transformation in digital uh, services and specifically in providing our customers with unique and leading digital banking services in a secure way. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, part of what we're doing in the Saudi National Bank from a cybersecurity perspective to support the uh, ambitious uh, digital services uh, strategy for the bank, we are um, uh, improving and introducing new concepts that may be not yet uh, very well mature within the country, but it is part of our analysis to the threats targeting the banking customers within Saudi Arabia and also the region. So the bank has invested in, um, in, in, in establishing a new function that looks after cyber fraud and it is targeted in assessing the various banking services, understanding the behaviors of the banking customers and addressing or introducing new controls that will help 
the customers in performing their financial transaction in a very secure manner without interrupting or disturbing their customer experience, which is for us a number one priority. So SMB has been known for m many years now uh, to be number one in digital banking as we are number one in, in revenue and profit. And we're uh, determined to continue this leading position, not only in Saudi Arabia, but in the region as well. Well, and, ensure, and part of the bank strategy is to ensure that we deliver, continue delivering secure banking services to our customers. So cybersecurity is not an afterthought. It is embedded within the DNA of the organization. It is considered part of the bank's overall strategy. And um, all of our services are delivered to our end customers with the security built in. Amazing, amazing. And this is actually all of the cybersecurity best practices to embed it at stage zero. Okay. Amazing. So, Ms. Russia, what are the success factors which I can relate embedding it at stage zero that has led to such maturity, leading in revenue, leading in providing the best customer services for the securing the future as also success? Of course, as an entity like SNB, they will have some perspective of long-term strategic uh, milestones and achievers for them to at attach. So what might be the main success factor that made SNB lead such financial sector for others to follow? So for us, um, the challenge was a bit different than any other organization because, as I said, SMB is the largest within the country. It's one of the largest within the region. Mm -hmm. And we do have, in addition to providing just uh, banking services to our customers, we have a responsibility to the community as well. We need to provide these services in a secure manner, ensuring that we uh, secure the confidentiality of information for our customers. Yes. So all of that was putting uh, more pressure and more responsibility on the team in cybersecurity. And we took that seriously and we have established long-term strategy back in 2013. And we looked into the establishment of the centralized cybersecurity function as a journey. So um, part of our journey, we considered quick wins, but at the same time, these quick wins were leading and supporting a longer term, uh, uh, longer term objectives. And as a result, we were able to monitor uh, the uh, value of our involvement, of the uh, new processes that we are implementing. So this is from one angle. From the other angle, we were part of the business organization. So in certain in, in other types of organizations, what will happen, you will find IT and security are completely separate from the business organization. And mm -hmm. cybersecurity will be considered only as a technical uh, part yes. of the technology uh, arm. However, I believe what helped us in overcoming this challenge or barrier was uh, the wise decision of the uh, Saudi Central Bank back in 2015 to insist on separating information security from IT, so mm. we should not report to the same manager, and that was implemented on all banks. Mm -hmm. And that gave us a different flavor or a different perspective, not only within the banking organization delivering technology services or additional services to the technology function only, but also to provide the businesses with assurances that the services and the processes implemented across the organization are considered from a security perspective. And um, moving to the risk function, because we're, we are part of the risk group within the organization, moving to the risk side of the organization helped us articulate cybersecurity risks and link them to the risks that the organization overall uh, uh, is facing. And as a result, we became part of the overall bank strategy. So we're not only in technology strategy, we're part of the digital strategy, we're part of the businesses. I'm thrilled that in my discussions now with the businesses, they understand yes. the importance of information protection. Yes. They don't understand the ransomware yet. We're getting there, but um, in a way or another, they share 
the responsibility. So it's no longer within the bank uh, that information security is the responsibility of the information security function. It's a joint responsibility where each and every employee thinks about the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the information asset before they press the button. Amazing, because uh, I believe from this very exclusive experience of SMB journey, uh, you have uh, shared with us that due to the central guidelines, uh, the information security has been separated from being under the wing of IT, which I can see from all the examples and the milestones Aye. has empowered information security in achieving what you have just shared by being embedded at the early stages of all the business requirements. I totally agree. Very amazing, sorry. With knowing that and knowing that the w Bank of Federation, uh, which is being also led by our uh, colleague uh, Badi uh, Abir Khadr, they have recently announced that they have mandated at least two seats of in the board for ladies. Having that said, what is how such practices align with the country's great efforts to strengthen the cybersecurity and to empower women at the same time? So, um, um, I was not, to be honest, following what's happening in Egypt, but uh, knowing that they took a decision to enforce a specific quota for women board member. Uh, means that the government sensed that they needed to take an action. Mm. Uh, however, I believe we have a complete different experience in Saudi Arabia, and specifically in the financial industry. Okay. So in the financial industry here in Saudi Arabia, uh, the, um, I can announce that the first uh, woman uh, who was assigned as a board member in a bank was uh, Mrs. Lubna Al-Ilayan, who is a very well-known um, uh, business uh, woman. Uh, and she was assigned that role back in 2004. Not even 2014, it was in 2004. Mrs. Lubna Al-Ilayan was a board member mm -hmm. in uh, Bank al Awal. Mm -hmm. which is the uh, Saudi Hollandi Bank, which sure. was the first bank established in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And since then, um, the, in, within the banking industry, I think the uh, direction was to ensure equal opportunities are provided to the individuals regardless of their gender. Yes. And this is something that we've witnessed in the financial sector on different banks. So we started with the uh, first assigned board member back in 2004 yes. in one of the banks. Mrs. Lubna al was also assigned as the chairperson of Saab al Awal Bank, and that mm -hmm. happened in 2019 without any involvement from the government. So mm -hmm. the government did not see uh, a need to interfere and put pressure on organizations because all of the, the, the financial industry was prepared in uh, providing that fair opportunity based on qualifications. Yes. The same thing happened also in uh, Samba, which is Saudi American uh, bank, before the merger with the National Commercial Bank, yes. uh, when Mrs. Rania Nashar was assigned as the first chief executive officer for a Saudi bank. And Samba was not a small bank. It was one of the largest in the country. And we are all, as Saudi women, proud of the achievements of Mrs. Lubna al and also with Mrs. Rania Nashar. And we have a lot of other examples in the financial industry. On the, government, on the, on the other um, sectors, I will just introduce, of course, this, this room is filled with, with, with highly um, uh, great examples of uh, executives and highly privileged ladies that I've uh, worked with and I've met during the last years. And um, a lot of them are board members, a lot of them are general managers and directors as well in their organizations. But also I would like to highlight one of the uh, so apparently the year 2019 was an excellent year for women. Yes. So we had the assignment of Mrs. Lubna al Ilayan as the chairperson of Saab and also the assignment of the first Saudi ambassador, which is Princess uh, Rima bint Bandar, yes. for 
to be assigned in one of the largest countries in the world. So um, I, I always like to say that for us Saudi women, when we do it, we want to, we like and enjoy doing it loud. <laughs> So we're either, uh, we have a, a distinguished ladies assigned as chairpersons, as ambassadors, and inshallah soon we will have them as um, ministers. Yes. And we have, of course, uh, our colleagues, uh, Dima Yahya, who provided the Kionet uh, speak, uh, speech, yes. uh, who is the general secretary of the first digital organization. Uh, so all of that is, uh, is, is an evident that the environment within Saudi Arabia is preparing the qualification, qualified women, qualified men, to uh, be involved in the, in the task force and basically contribute to the development of the country in general without having this, uh, this bias. So for all the colleagues, the young generation who's watching us, it's not you are, of course, a privilege to be a Saudi woman. However, we need to work very hard on the qualifications and on building our capabilities. So whenever there is an opportunity and a manager will take a decision between two to be hired, let's make sure that more Saudi women will be selected in that role. And uh, to be honest, I'm starting to see this even reflected on the uh, hiring process. So in the past, whenever we announced for a new position or a, uh, a vacant position yes. within the bank, um, so we receive usually, let's say if we received 100 CVs, only nine or 10 will be for women. a qualified Saudi woman. Okay. Now, <laughs> the numbers are increasing. I will not share the numbers, so our male colleagues will not feel threatened. But uh, the numbers are increasing, and as a result, we will find more uh, the, the, the pool of uh, female uh, workforce is increasing. A final uh, remark on this point, in, in, in the Saudi National Bank, in the cybersecurity function, I do have five departments reporting into me. I didn't mean meant for that to happen, but three out of the five are women. And uh, it's basically, yes. it wasn't planned for. It was, uh, they were selected based on their qualifications. Amazing. Uh, it was provided as a fair opportunity for everyone, but Amazing. I have three out of five inshallah. very qualified, highly qualified Saudi women, and inshallah more, more to come and more will join. Inshallah, I, I have heard this sentence a lot between women leaders, executive in Saudi. She said, Dream, I haven't planned for it, but it's happening. The majority of the high caliber are women. And don't quote me for it, but it's not like because I'm being supportive to women, I have deliberately do, did that, but they have earned it with their Sorry. high caliber. And I believe us being here as women cyber security and our first in person, uh, meeting and conference in Saudi delivers the same message Sorry. that with our women sa sa for the Saudi chapter and having Wix me being present in person delivers the same message that aligns with you that women in cybersecurity in the Saudi Arabia are leading and thriving and that's why we are today here celebrating them and celebrating our first in person Thank with you. you. So having that said, and these amazing sites where women has been empowered back in 2004, even in the financial sector, amazingly, this is amazing numbers and amazing facts. We would like to say, what are the opportunities and challenges that has been foreseen in your role as a CISO in the financial sector? And does being a female have an impact of that role? Does it? <laughs> <laughs> I will leave that for you. Wallahi, yani, I uh, personally, I didn't, um, I didn't see being a uh, woman staff member is a real issue. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I was uh, blended in in the in the in the environment in the organization, uh, whether it was SMB or the organizations I worked in before. You have a story. Uh, being a colleague. Yes. <laughs> Uh, regardless of the gender. I was maybe privileged and blessed to be raised in, a, um, in an environment of uh, family, friends, uh, schools, uh, college, and even in the work space 
where there wasn't much of a differentiation or segregation or discrimination against a specific gender. Yes. Um, and that, um, I believe, goes back to, uh, and it is very important for the young generations to select the right organization for them to work at. Mm. To be honest, the support and the environment I was provided with while working at the Saudi National Bank um, helped me in reaching to where I'm reaching to today. Exactly. Because th this organization is built on or uses best practices in how the human resources or human capital is being managed. Yes. So it is not left to personal opinions or the preference of a specific manager or another mm. to provide the job or the position. Yes. A lot of or many of the leading colleagues, female colleagues in the country yes. were actually graduates from the Saudi National Bank, Inshallah. which was previously known as NCB. And I'm glad and proud and happy to meet with them and see them growing in other sectors within Saudi Arabia. Inshallah. So um, ensuring that you are working in a um, environment or an organization that will provide you with equivalent opportunities that does not uh, discriminate based on gender or or um, or anything else and ensuring that there is a structure system system for recognition system for also to provide training so I hear stories about trainings being provided to a specific gender against the other yes. so however if you're working in an organization that is following a best practice in their training um, analysis or training provide uh, providing trainings to their employees it's impossible that you find this happening um, so I was privileged to work in uh, the Saudi National Bank that provided the required support uh, mentorship coaching was yes. part of our uh, standard structure uh, throughout the years uh, proper training, providing the right opportunities, internal job posting, uh, career path strategies, Amazing. succession planning, all of these strategies is something that we always hear and practice at the Saudi National Bank. So my remarks or my uh, advice to all young generations to ensure they are part of the uh, a good organization that has a strong uh, human resources strategy and how mm. they progress and support the um, um, all all workers, not only male or female. Exactly, and similar for a similar such fostering environment would be SNB. So please do uh, submit like your it. application to SNB. Like <laughs> yes, SNB is is a, uh, a great place to work for. Inshallah. The encouragement uh, that we're, we're witnessing as employees um, is um, uh, basically very um, uh, supportive and uh, it's encouraging us to provide more and more. Um, and it's not only me, by, by the way, I have a lot of my colleagues sharing the same story. We believe that we're working in a great uh, organization that considers the uh, support of their employees. And it's, by the way, part of our five strategic pillars. So we do have five strategic pillars that we're working on since 2013. Hmm. Be number one in revenue, Amazing. number one and profit, okay. to be the employer of choice, okay. to be the first in digital banking, and to be the first in customer service, and we achieved all. Amazing. Here you go. This is the secret. Okay. Amazing and inspiring, actually. So, uh, Ms. Russia, uh, I have always uh, hunted the lead, women leaders in my ever-going question. How do we, as women, in the field, in the careers, how do we actually do the uh, and handle the balancing integration between our career and life? I have asked women from around the globe, even our Harford professors, I have asked them, and I will never miss the opportunity to ask you also, since we have this flash panel, so I have cheated and put this question among the questions because I'm very much eager to know how did you able to be uh, to uh, integrate 
the work requirement and our life and social requirements and make sure that you, you're, what you're doing is currently thriving and excelling here and also thriving and excelling there. So how can you answer? So um, I think always this is a tricky question, okay. <laughs> uh, especially if it's being asked to um, a woman because um, um, usually there is this perception that it's very difficult for a female worker to uh, strike the balance between work and, and yes. family life. Yeah. But I think that's one, yeah, it's a myth. Okay. Why? Because if we believed in that, if we believe that a uh, woman cannot take a leading role, cannot work in sophisticated jobs because there is a responsibility for the family, mm -hmm. we're actually blaming our male colleagues to be irresponsible parents and family members. Because if we believe for a second that a male colleague is able to provide more focus in the work more than the woman because she has a family to consider and think about, it means that our male colleagues are not good parents, yes. which I disagree with. Yes. But the trick is how we organize our life. So forget about being a woman, forget about being a male colleague or a uh, team member. Yes. Let's look into the advices of the uh, top executives around the world. Okay. So you will find them all agreeing on few basics. They wake up early. Okay. They take good care of their health. They spend quality time in the office and also for their, with their family members and for themselves. They're very well organized. They go to the office an hour before to catch up on few items. And the magical word was they read and they read and they read. They read in everything. Okay. So if we take all of that, these are golden advices that if we practiced, we will be able to strike that balance. Mm -hmm. So whenever there is, the, the difference maybe in the world of cybersecurity is that uh, if God forbid there is a cyber attack or a security incident, you're expected to be in the office. Yes. And usually, attackers will pick the uh, amazing night time. <laughs> Holidays, yes. Yes, night time. So there is an expectation that women, yes. women security analysts will not be able to pick up the phone. Guess what? Mm. Half of my team members are male okay. workers or okay. team members. Mm. I am the only one who the entire bank is able to call at 2 a.m. knowing that I will pick up the phone, okay? So it has nothing to do with being a woman or a male. It's being there to provide the right support to address the requirements of the job itself. I understand the responsibility and the accountability that I'm, I'm taking over by uh, joining this role. And as a result, this is my commitment toward the bank. And my family understands that a specific time, I, they will find me going out of my room at 1 a.m. and going to the office just to handle a specific matter. Mm -hmm. So um, that will never happen if you as an individual is not organized. And we find in our, uh, and why I'm saying that um, um, having these um, uh, assumptions that women will not pick the phone after 5 p.m. and all of these excuses for not hiring more women in certain positions, um, there are certain, uh, some of our colleagues, male colleagues, who are very comfortable in working from 8 to 5. Mm. They're not willing to take that extra mile. Yes. So regardless of the gender, it is the decision and the objective of the individual themselves. Right. If you want to take a leading position, there is more that you need to spend for. So today, I have the privilege of sparing time to participate in such events, to um, attend events, to take long vacations. But when I was a junior worker, I was working all the time. I mm -hmm. did not have time for my family. It took me a, a while until I reached to this situation 
this current status where I know where to spend my time in and how to prioritize. Amazing. And I will relate to what you have just said about the, having your family understand that. And it's okay that I am now there's an emergency and they will understand that. Uh, I have heard so many, in, uh, let's involve your, uh, your family in these matters so they will understand, especially in the cybersecurity. And there are another perspective saying, let, don't get them to the details. But now you just said that they understand that they are fully aware of my role. And if I go at 1 a.m. to my office, then they would understand that and they will support whenever needed. Definitely. Do you believe that this is a crucial success factor to our ladies here to ensure that it's their support of the family and the understanding? The golden um, advice that I usually ensure that I communicated to my colleagues, the young generation, is ensure that you establish a strong support system, a strong support yes. system in your family and a strong support system in your organization, the organization you're working on, and also a strong support system within the industry you're working on. Mm -hmm. Because without that support system, you will not be able to survive. Sure. You, will be, you will continuously face challenges and you will be left alone to handle them. But having a support system, family, friend, colleagues within the work even, and it's not necessarily, by the way, for, for us as cybersecurity professionals, yes. because we're perceived to be technical, <laughs> that we have our support system only from IT. That's also another mistake. We need to have the support system across the entire organization. So if I need something from marketing, I need something from HR, I need an, uh, to resolve or understand the language of a specific business, I will have a supporter there. So establishing that network is very important. And it is linked back to ensuring that we are, as individuals, very organized, so we are able to do the work yes. and have time to establish that network. It is a bit difficult, but there are theories. If you practice something for 21 days, yes. you will be able to master it. Others are saying 40 days. I'm not really sure what's the number, but we'll see how it goes. So um, uh, before we close, I want to just uh, congratulate Informatech for this brilliant uh, decision of having the head uh, mics. Because <laughs> usually, whenever I'm holding a mic, yes. I never it will face it yani, an issue in stopping me. But Zen. with the head mic, I'm very much <laughs> controlled. So let's uh, continue with the head mics for future uh, events. Well done. So we're wrapping up here, Mr. Rasha, with your insights and your golden takeaways to our male, our coolie, male allies and our ladies. What is the golden takeaways from Ms. Rasha? I'm so much thrilled to have you here that they can take it home and just resonate with their minds as they take their life and career. So um, um, what we're seeing today in the ad hack event is an evidence that the domain of cybersecurity is not only the future. Yes for uh, the next generation. It is the present that we're living at. The field of cybersecurity is an interesting domain. It's dynamic. However, uh, to be able to keep up with the changes that are happening, similar events like what the event we are at today is very important to ensure it continuously uh, provided so uh, the interaction the network yes. the uh, alliances the learnings the new learning so when we meet together we learn about uh, different practices happening maybe not yet implemented or did not yet reach to us here in this part of the world so ensuring that we continuously um, refresh our knowledge and our understanding, I think it's a key component that will support the success of us and as individuals, regardless of our uh, domain and sector. Yes. So cybersecurity, apparently, it's my passion. Um, it's, an, it's, an ex it's an exciting domain, and I was really thrilled when I came in the first day and saw the young generation, yes. uh, students in schools and universities yes. passing by to ask what is it that they need to, uh, to do to reach to uh, professional levels in cybersecurity, and I would actually encourage and ask the support of the professionals to um, uh, give back, continue 
continue with their role as you're uh, doing, Dr. Reem, uh, through the association and other participations to share your experience, to share your uh, challenges, to share your successes. So you can make it, make it easier for others to join and uh, lead the way, inshallah, for a greater position for the entire um, Arab world within Allah in this dimension. Thank you so much, Ms. Rasha. It's learn, unlearn, and relearn. And I, am, I have learned a lot from just being in this panel with you. Thank you for your time, and thank you for your insightful Allah yeah. Thank Shukran you so much. Shukran jazeelan. Shukran lisa'at Thank you. 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 Thank you.